Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. This is the Medeo T9, made in Netherlands by Royal Dutch Gazelle. It is an incredible value for a European-made e-bike. It is available in three different sizes, three different colors. I have the Georgia Peach and the Jeans Blue here. It is also available in ivory. It is an amazing value because it has high quality components, hydraulic brakes, frame lock, Bosch mid-drive, Shimano Dior drivetrain, and it is very, very affordable. So in this video review, I'm going to talk about what it actually it means for it to be a Dutch bike, because they are Dutch bikes. It's more than just being made in Netherlands. I'm going to go through all the detailed specs of the bikes. I'm going to take you on a ride test as well. If you want the detailed specs, the current pricing, you want to order online for free shipping most places in Canada, or you have questions and want to find our contact info, you can find all of that on our website at citruscycles.ca. There you can reach out to us with any questions you have, or you can set up an appointment to come try them here in beautiful Ladysmith on Vancouver Island. So I should mention before I get too long in the video here that I'm not getting paid by anyone to do the video review. Obviously I make a living selling pedal assist electric bikes here in uh, Ladysmith with citruscycles.ca and if you choose to buy an e-bike from us then that's how I make a living. But I want you to find the perfect e-bike for your needs. That's why I do the video reviews and I'm going to tell you the things that I like and the things that I might change. Since I'm not getting paid I can say exactly what I want. So Gazelle's been making their bikes in the same factory for over 125 years which is pretty cool. This is their sportier model. It's a little bit, uh, I think they call it a sportive trekking model. So it's a little bit uh, sportier than some of their other models. It does have the Shimano Dior drivetrain here rather than an internally geared hub that makes it a little sportier. We do have a suspension fork and it is a reinforced uh, step through design. So although it's uh, still a low step, we actually have a second uh, top bar here, or top tube that helps to give the bike a lot of reinforcement so you can ride this bike a little bit more aggressively and it has a little bit of a a sportier type of feel to it. So of course Gazelle makes their bikes in Netherlands and when you get a European bike you are getting that kind of quality, the engineering and attention to detail that you will find in a European bike. The other thing I like to point out sometimes to consider is that you're getting a bike that's been made by people that are well cared, cared for. I mean they're getting paid uh, a living wage, the company focuses on wellness and sometimes that's a little bit different than say a bike that's built in Asia where they're really focused on driving down labor costs and and uh, it's nice to see a company that not only pays attention to the wellness of their staff, but also a European company is held to higher ecological standards. So the uh, environmental footprint of building a bike like this is much lower in a country like Netherlands where they are concerned about the environment. And so sometimes it's worth investing in those features, not just the design and the engineering and the attention to detail. Surprisingly, this is an incredibly affordable bike. If you head over to our website at citruscycles.ca, there you'll find the current pricing and really this is priced lower than a lot of Asian made bikes and you're getting all the benefits of a European made e-bike. Now this is a true Dutch bike that means more than just being made in Netherlands. It means that it is designed for comfort, we've got convenience and utility are all kind of design philosophies or approaches to making the bike. So you can see in terms of uh, comfort it is a step through so we've got an, a low step here easy to get on and off. Now if you look at my other video reviews you'll see that this one doesn't have as wide of a step area as say the Easy Flow or the Arroyo because it's a trekking bike they've added this other top tube here to make it really stiff so that you can do more aggressive Riding, but that has reduced the step through area a little bit here but it's still really easy to get on and off. That's great if you have uh, mobility issues or you know if you just like me and you want it to be easy uh, especially this is the type of bike I'd call an evening bike when I'm tired and not sure if I want to go out but once I get on it it's so fun and so easy. The other nice thing is that if you load up that back rack with uh, heavy bags, you're doing your grocery shopping, or riding to work, it's nice not having to lift your leg over the back or balance the bike with all that weight on there. You can just easily step right through. Even if you don't have mobility issues, it is nice to have that. If you're in a lot of uh, traffic where you're starting and stopping a lot. The other nice thing is that when you stop you can slide off the saddle and stand flat-footed. Ideally you want your saddle high enough that you uh, have your leg almost fully extended so that your knees aren't getting sore. The challenge with that is then when you stop you're kind of tiptoes and, and you know trying to balance the bike with the step through easy enough just to slide off the saddle, stop and be safe. 
In terms of comfort, we do have these swept back handlebars here. We have ergonomic uh, rubber grips. We do have an adjustable stem, but in order to get to the price point that they have, and again, it's a very attractive price point, they've used a little bit more of a simpler uh, adjustable stem where you do need a tool. If you check out the uh, Arroyo or the Easy Club or some of their other bikes, they have a tool-free adjustment. On this one, you are going to need to actually come into here. There we go and uh, loosen that bolt off and then you can adjust the angle and then loosen these two bolts off to adjust the angle of the handlebars within the clamp and so this isn't the type of thing that you'd be quickly adjusting day to day uh, but you can certainly dial it in and get it to the uh, right uh, position for you. Interestingly they are using kind of a, a quill stem here rather than the newer style so that does allow you to get this higher and lower as well. Rounding out our comfort approach here on this Dutch bike, we do have a uh, suspension fork here. It is a spring fork, of course, in that price range. Uh, you're not going to get an air fork, but we're not mountain biking with it either. We are trekking, we're doing light trails, and you're going to find that that's going to help smooth out the bumps. Also, keep you a little bit safer because you're not worried about swerving to avoid obstacles because if you roll over a pothole, the suspension is going to help absorb that bump and you're not going to be concerned that you're going to fly off of your bike. Um, this isn't an integrated suspension fork like we see on some of the other Gazelle, uh, so this does have more travel, which is nice. Uh, the flip side though is that you're going to want to keep that a little bit cleaner. It's going to require a little bit more maintenance than the integrated ones, but it's also going to give you uh, a little bit more travel. It's going to be a little bit more effective on, on rougher uh, roads. We also have a nice comfortable seat here. Uh, it is a uh, Selle Royale. There's some nice gel in there. It is a rigid uh, seat post. It's not a suspension seat post. Again, to be able to get to this price point, they're not going to include that, but that's something you could easily add afterwards. We've got lots of different options for that. Another design feature besides the comfort and the step through on a Dutch bike is utility. You want this to be a bike you can use for everything. You're going to use it for recreation, for having fun, but also for commuting, for getting to work. It's a form of transportation. And so we have things like the lights that are built in, running off of your main battery. Well thought out. We actually have a side cutout in here to keep you safe. Nice bright uh, beam at the front there. And again, in terms of safety, we've got this uh, uh, reflective uh, sidewall in both the front and the rear tire which is great because that illuminates really brightly at night and keeps you safe. Like I said we've got the front light running off of your main battery which is great you don't have to worry about remembering to bring it along and uh, charging it up and we've got the rear light here as well also with an integrated reflector and also running off of the main battery. Uh, before I forget, I will show you to turn the lights on and off if you need to do that with the Bosch system here. And I'll talk about the Bosch system in a little bit. You just simply press and hold the minus, uh, or sorry, press and hold the plus. There we go. And that will turn the lights on or off. You can see the little light indicator is gone there. And press and hold it again, and the light will come back on. While we're up here, I should mention we do have a bell. Now, this isn't as cool as the uh, twist bell that you find on some of the uh, Gazelle bikes, but it's nice and loud. So it is a flick bell and uh, it's actually quite loud, which is uh, good. Again, kind of that utilitarian feature. We've got all the things that you would need are included with the bike, including the rear rack and even a bungee cord to help uh, strap down whatever you want to put. Maybe your jacket that's getting warm you can do that. With the rack, of course, you've got uh, regular sized rails here. So you can put a standard bag on there and there's a place down here at the bottom for you to... Um, use the strap to hold it on. So very handy if you're using it for getting to and from work or grocery shopping. Along those lines of you know utility and having everything you need, the bike actually comes with a frame lock. This is a, a really clever way of locking and securing your bike. Come over to the other side here. Don't have to worry about remembering to bring the key along. The key is actually captured. In other words, it's always in here. I can't take the key out unless I lock it. So I don't have to worry about uh, forgetting to bring it along on my ride. I simply turn the key, come over to the other side here. A little bit hard to do with one hand. We'll see if I can do it. So let me try repositioning that. There we go. So I've uh, turned the key on the one side, pull the lever down. This is the lever here. And you can see that there's a steel bar now running through the rear wheel. That means the bike can't be ridden away because the wheel can't turn. Now, of course, somebody could uh, come and pick the bike up, of course. And so for that uh, reason, there is a port here. We can put the chain in there and it 
the chain then secures your bike to a rack or a post or another bike. The cool thing about that chain, it's a special chain, just goes right in this port. The chain itself doesn't have a locking mechanism. The reason for that is you've got the lock already on the bike. There's two advantages. First, the chain's going to be a little bit lighter than other chains because it doesn't have that lock. And secondly, the one key that you use for this uh, frame lock is the same key that is going to unlock the chain because it's using the same lock. And in fact, the key that we use for the lock here is the same key that we use for the battery. So the battery can't be removed unless you put the key in and uh, then you can remove the uh, battery if you wanted to charge it inside. Of course you don't have to unlock it, you can keep it locked and you can charge the battery on the bike. There is a charging flap right over here. So in addition to that frame lock we do have a kickstand uh, of course which is really handy. It's mounted at the back here which I really like. It's mounted to the rear chainstay so that if I'm uh, moving the bike and the pedals move they're not going to collide with the kickstand. While we're checking things out back here I should mention we do have hydraulic rim brakes. So unlike regular rim brakes these are hydraulic. Like in your car you're not relying on the strength of your foot to stop the bike, it's the same, or stop your car, sorry, it's the same with a hydraulic rim brake on a bike. There's no cable in there, we don't have to worry about it stretching or breaking or rusting. You don't have to use the strength of your hands to stop the bike, instead with the hydraulic fluid you could actually stop this bike on the steepest hills here in Ladysmith simply by uh, one finger on each of the brake levers because it's relying on the hydraulic fluid to uh, stop the bike for you. So it's not the strength of your hands, they're self-adjusting, very little maintenance. Now this may be new for a lot of uh, people they are familiar with hydraulic disc brakes where you've got a disc rotor and brake pads on the disc. What's interesting about the uh, hydraulic rim brakes is they're actually very effective. You may be familiar with mechanical rim brakes in the past and feel that they're not so effective with these because you're using that hydraulic force they're very very effective in fact if you think about it on a mountain bike we try to put a very large brake rotor on to give you more stopping power by using the rim of the re uh, wheel we have a very very large rotor so they're actually quite effective very easy to use uh, and uh, really essentially maintenance free. Another feature I really like about the bike is we are using these Continental Ride City e-bike specific tires. So they're a little bit heavier duty, they're going to last a little bit longer, and they do have a high degree of puncture resistance as well as this reflective uh, sidewall that I already mentioned. The tread pattern, it's fairly uh, smooth, so it's a fast rolling tire, but uh, it if you come with me on the ride test you'll see it works quite well on grass, uh, wet leaves, uh, pavement, gravel, uh, loose gravel, hard packed gravel, so this is kind of bike that you can ride anywhere. Now if you're planning on doing a lot of mud that might be a, a bit of a challenge for you if you go mountain biking again. It's not a mountain bike but you can go trekking with it. We do have the uh, fenders here with a little bit of a fender uh, uh, flare at the end here to uh, a mud flap so to speak to uh, keep you uh, dry so this is a great bike that you can use for uh, riding to work and to that end we do actually find that we have a full length uh, and complete chain guard here to also keep you dry you don't have to worry about changing your clothes trying not to get oil on them because this is going to keep you well protected so it's great having a chain guard that protects your clothes from getting dirty or your clothes getting caught in the chain. It's a full length coverage here which is great. Now we can't have a chain case like we see on some of the other Gazelle e-bikes because we do actually have a traditional cassette and derailleur on the back here. They're using a Shimano Dior which is actually quite a, a step up from kind of the basic Shimano drivetrains. So it's going to shift uh, very smoothly, won't require as much maintenance, it should last longer. It's nice seeing them putting that quality despite the price of the bike it's actually a really good quality we've got a good uh, climbing gear on here as well so when you do get to a steep hill uh, you've got the assistance from the motor of course which we'll talk about in a few minutes but you've got a good uh, climbing gear here and I think we're dealing with the nine speeds we've got the uh, trigger shifters up front here and uh, you can see we actually have a visual indicator of the gear that you're in Another interesting point here is that as a trekking bike we actually do have a quick release on the rear wheel and on the front wheel with that suspension fork. So the Medeo is powered by the Bosch Active Line Plus. It really is an incredible value to get a German made motor like that. Very reliable. One of the things I love about working with Bosch is they do have a service center in Vancouver and Toronto. We can get parts and service very easily from them. 
they are not only very reliable but they are really focused on making sure that this uh, bike is going to be something that you're going to be able to ride for a really long time. So for example this battery, this is a Bosch Power Pack 400. You could actually upgrade it to a 500 if you wanted and have 25% more capacity. Of course they went with the 400 because it allows them to get that uh, very attractive price point. But the neat thing about Bosch is when they came out with the higher capacity Power Pack they purposely made it backwards compatible so you could actually interchange them. And it's nice knowing that many years from now Bosch will still have a replacement battery should you need it. And part of that is easy for them to achieve because they require the manufacturer to use their battery. So this is a Bosch battery, it's not a Gazelle battery, and all the brands that use the Bosch motor are required to use the Bosch battery. That allows Bosch to make sure that their batteries are available well into the future, that the quality is quite high, that they're going to last a really long time, so it's really nice to see that. While we're looking at the battery, I should mention I'm usually not a big fan of having the battery on the rear rack here because it does shift the balance of the bike up a little bit higher, especially on a trekking bike like this. Gazelle has done a good job though of the frame design by having that extra top tube on there. I've, I haven't really noticed the, the battery negatively impacting on the handling of the bike. So again, this isn't something for mountain biking, but for trekking, uh, for a little bit of a sportier ride, it uh, hasn't uh, been a problem so far. So going back to the motor here, it is a mid-drive motor that means uh, that the uh, weight is low and centered on the bike, which is really nice, a much uh, preferred solution compared to a hub motor where sometimes you'll have the motor in the rear wheel or in the front wheel. Not only is that better for weight distribution, but it also means that the uh, motor is turning the chain. That's how your bike is normally propelled. So it feels very natural, it's very smooth, it's very responsive, it has a great torque sensor. Torque sensor means that it's figuring out how hard you're pedaling and matching that power accordingly. So that way you aren't worried about accidentally hitting the pedals and getting a big surge of power and ending up uh, off the trail. If you're riding on trails it's nice to know that you can set the level of assistance you want and it's going to really pay attention to what you're doing and respond accordingly. The other nice thing about it turning the chain is that means when you change gears, we've got nine gears here, if I go into my easier gear to make it easier for me to pedal up a hill, the motor is now also in an easier gear because the motor's turning the chain just like you are. You change to an easier gear, now it's easier to get up the hill. Mid-drive motors often have more torque. This is uh, Bosch's lower torque motor. They have one that's even less torque than this, but this is uh, only 50 newton meters of uh, torque. Uh, they do have a couple motors with more torque. Torque is what gets us up the hills, and you'll see in the ride test, I do actually make it up some really steep hills, but it's not as fast, uh, perhaps, as some of the other motors, like their Performance Line CX motor has 50% more torque, so it would be much uh, faster and easier to get up the hills, but this is still very adequate. The advantage of going with a lower torque motor is it's much more efficient. This is a very light motor. There's very little, if any, resistance when you turn the assistance off or when you exceed the 32 km an hour maximum cutoff speed. Um, but it's also very, very efficient because it's not using as much power, so you do get tremendous range with that motor. So Bosch makes a number of different displays. Gazelle's decided to go with the Purion display. It's a compact display. It's permanently mounted to the bike. There is a USB port on the side here, but that's for running diagnostics. It won't actually uh, charge a device. Nice and easy to read and very simple, very straightforward. By putting it over here on the side, you don't have to worry about it interfering if you want to put it a basket or a handlebar bag on there. The uh, uh, bike can be upgraded to the uh, Bosch smartphone hub if you wish. You can check out a video review of that on our website. That's a retrofit that we can do here in the store for you. It does require replacing the wiring. And you'll notice the wiring is running through the frame, which is really nice. Nice and clean look. And so we could replace that, run the new wires to the drive unit, and that would allow you to use your smartphone to control the bike. And uh, you can control your smartphone from the bike. So kind of a cool feature. But the Purion is really very straightforward, very simple, nice display, easy to use, and so you can see the uh, current speed right up here, and uh, at the bottom, uh, the battery life, and the light status. We also have some information we can cycle through on the bottom here. So there's our trip distance. If I press and hold minus, that cycles through the information. So there's the total odometer on the bike. Press and hold minus again. Takes me to my range. So it's saying it's off right now. I can go as far as I want. If I move it up to eco, that's the lowest 
level of assistance, giving you about 50% uh, boost over your input. You can see I can now go 76 kilometers. If I move up to tour, flashes tour, but then it goes back and shows me my range. Sport again flashes, shows me my range is 33, and up to turbo shows me that my range is down to 29. When I press and hold the minus again, now it's going to show me the level of assistance permanently without flashing or adjusting. I can go back down to tour and I can see I'm always on tour. Uh, so the plus and minus basically moving the assistance up and down pressing and holding the minus cycles through the uh, information at the bottom of the screen If I want to reset my trip counter I press and hold plus and minus at the same time to reset it and uh, If I press and hold the plus that uh, turns the light on and off so really straightforward not a lot to remember It does have walk mode so I re release the kickstand here. There's a walk button right underneath here I press and hold the walk button, nothing happens, the bike doesn't move, but the display says walk plus. That's my visual cue that I now press and hold the plus button to move the bike along. So press that, press and hold the plus, and there we go, the bike will move along at a four or five kilometer an hour walking pace. So that's really useful if you are, uh, you know, have a lot of bags or something on your rear rack and uh, you need to go walking in a pedestrian area or you're getting off the ferry they don't like it if you ride off the ferry ramp so you can kind of walk your bike and just steer it and the bike moves itself along for you so as you can see the Medeo is an amazing value for a European made bike it's a Dutch bike that's easy to get on and off it's safe with the hydraulic brakes very reliable with the Bosch mid drive feature rich because we've got the rear rack we've got the uh, frame lock we've got the adjustable uh, handlebars we have lights we have uh, puncture resistant tires with reflective sidewalls everything you would want for a really great price I'm gonna take you on a ride test so you can see how it handles but if you get the opportunity you can come by our store here in Ladysmith and try it out for yourself you can also reach out to us with any questions if I missed anything something doesn't make sense just head over to our website at citruscycles.ca and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have so the Medeo is uh, Gazelle's, they call it a sportive trekking style bike. It's still very comfort oriented, so I'm still uh, quite upright. We've got an adjustable angle on the stem, uh, and we can actually, it's a quill stem, so I can get the head over a little bit higher if I want to, or a little bit lower. And yet, I can't describe it, but somehow it does, yeah, feel a little bit more sporty, a little more trekking oriented than perhaps some of their other bo uh, bikes even though it's still swept back bars still very upright comfortable uh, riding position the uh, Bosch active line plus is uh, very smooth very responsive the nice thing is you know when I stop here as soon as I put force on the pedals I get assistance from the motor right away, so there isn't a need to have a throttle to get started. People often ask that, and really, you get the power as soon as you put the force on the pedals. Very smooth starting and stopping. The uh, hydraulic brakes are a little bit noisy. It was a little bit uh, wet earlier. I'm gonna put it up to turbo for the hill. But they're very effective. I'm uh, quite happy with them so far. No problem on the hill here on turbo, not even in my easiest gear. So with the Shimano uh, shifting system here, uh, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, the Dior, of course, is uh, quite smooth. Shifting is very easy. We've got bi-directional push-pull, which is nice for uh, shifting there and uh, yeah it's I it feels fun like it feels sporty it feels responsive it's like yeah it is a little bit of a sportier bike getting into some broken pavement here uh, potholes and so it's a good test for the suspension fork one of the things I would probably add and you know this is a, a really really good value it's an incredible value so with the money you're saving I would add a suspension seat post and that's really going to help especially on a bike like this where you're so upright 
what's happening is the suspension fork is actually doing a really good job of dampening the vibrations uh, and also helping with the bumps and the potholes um, but I can feel it in my back a little bit because we don't have that suspension seat post and because I'm so upright that most of my weight is still on my seat so having a suspension seat post would be a nice upgrade okay I'm going to slam on the brakes here I'm in some gravel wow they're very quick to respond Uh, not really locking up, just a little bit on the rear there in this gravel. Try one more time. Yeah, the nice thing about these hydraulic rim brakes is you really can grab them hard. They're not uh, quite as, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the word, but they're a little bit smoother. So with a hydraulic uh, disc brake, you want to be careful if you grab too hard, you could lock up and, you know, it could be a challenge with this. These are working out really well. To do some swerving on some of the loose gravel here, handling it no problem. Uh, braking wasn't a problem, and the suspension fork. So you know, if, if you're riding on a lot of rough stuff like this, this isn't a bad bike to have. Adding that suspension seat post would help. You know, obviously, if you're doing this all the time, all day long, and really rough stuff, eh, maybe look at some of the full suspension bikes that we have. I'm gonna hit a little bit of a trail here, and because it is kind of a trekking style bike you know it's possible to kind of take some detours like this now this isn't a super wide tire I think we're about a 1.75 or something like that so it's, it's doing well in this um, no problems but again you know it's not designed for mountain biking and yet despite it being upright I'm, I'm feeling I've got good control over the bike I, I feel like I could ride this you know fairly aggressively if I wanted to Pop off the curb here. No problem cornering at uh, speeds. You know, it's interesting with that uh, Bosch Active Line Plus, there's been a few times where I've been pedaling past the 32 kilometer an hour cutoff, and I really haven't noticed the transition between support and no support. I don't feel any resistance or drag at all when the assistance is off or when I'm going more than 32. And it is just so quiet. Like, I'm in turbo right now. I can't hear it. It's really quiet. <laughs> so you hardly notice it's there. I mean, obviously it's there. I'm flying up this hill, no problem. But it's just smooth and quiet. Alright, all. All right, got another big hill up ahead here. The uh, nice loud bell. The uh, GPS should show on the right. Yeah, a gradient. The speed will be off. It'll go. It'll tell you that I'm going much slower than I am because it's not measuring the actual distance I'm riding, like my tires on the bike are doing. It's just measuring the horizontal distance. And of course, going up a hill, you're covering more ground. So I'm curious to know. This is a lower torque motor. It's a very steep hill. It's going to exceed 20 percent, probably 22, 23 percent at some point. Off a curb there, no problem with that. Now this is a nine-speed cassette, moderately big climbing gear, but not super big. So you know, I'm anticipating needing to put a little bit of work into it, but so far it's not bad. So far I'm doing about 11 kilometers an hour, down to 10. I don't feel that I need to shift to an easier gear. I don't feel that I have to pedal really hard. Now, obviously, 10 kilometers an hour, I'd probably be going a little bit quicker, a little bit faster if I had a Bosch bike, or a bike with Bosch CX drive, for example, which is more torque. But I think because this is so light, you know, I'm just no problem flying up there at all, actually. Uh, that's impressive. So I've stopped on a bit of a slope here, put force on the pedals, get the assistance right away, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to test for speed wobbles. That means I'm going to 
take my hands off the handlebars, which you shouldn't do, and see if at any point the uh, front end kind of gets a little jittery. And that can sometimes happen with a step through like this. Yeah, I feel like uh, up until close to 40 kilometers an hour, it was perfectly stable. Once we got over f close to that 40, the front end was wanting to do a little bit of vibration. No problem with the brakes, that's for sure. So that's good. So uh, what can happen sometimes with the step through is uh, at certain speeds, if the bike doesn't have a lot of uh, stiffness, the front end can start to kind of shake around uh, a lot if you don't have your hands on the handlebars. Easy solution to that, of course, is, uh, you know, keep your hands on the handlebars, and that's a good way to ride. It's just trying it again there, but really anything up until that uh, 40 kilometers an hour, there was no uh, vibration from the front end. When we got close to that, it was, it was trying to develop a speed wobble a little bit, uh, so it was moving around a little bit, but uh, it really wasn't bad at all. And so what that tells us is the bike is quite laterally stiff and you can ride it fairly aggressively without worrying about uh, the handling of the bike. And certainly I'm feeling that, you know, as I'm kind of zigzagging my way through the barriers, no problem with that at all. Let me hit a little bit of trail here, uh, you know, right over the curb, grass, all that kind of stuff. And it's working out just fine. tricky parts here to get around and this is where you know you want to feel like you can control the bike and go a little bit off-roading with it obviously that's not its main purpose but it achieves it fairly well So an enjoyable bike. It's a nice having a step through that you can still uh, consider kind of a trekking bike. Hopefully I've given you an idea of what you can do with the bike. It's an incredible value. Brakes are great. Shifting is good. Comfortable riding position. Really enjoying that Bosch uh, mid-drive motor. If you have more questions, you want to come try it yourself, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.